So you have heard all the hype about Notion, you opened the app and then you didn't know what to do with it. I know because I felt the same way when I first opened it. Notion is quite overwhelming at first, so that is the reason why I decided to make this video, to help you ease it in into the Notion ecosystem. So my promise is that by the end of this video, you will have a simple but working Notion workspace that then you can expand upon later. So let's get into it. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel. I'm a former engineer, I guess still an engineer, founder of the Notion Academy. And on this channel, we use Notion and other tools and strategies to free up our time and to gain control of our lives. So the first thing that we are going to need in our Notion workspace is some organization. So that's why here I have created this, my HQ page. This is going to be the page in which I am gonna display all the different pages that my system contains. And I like to separate everything in columns. So let's create some columns for this. I'm going to separate this layout in task management, knowledge management, and one scratch pad. We will see how each of them looks in a minute. So first let's create them. Now for creating the columns, I just have to drag from these six dots to the right until we can see this vertical line. And then we drop it and we just created a column. And the same process for the other one. Now in order to make it a little bit more beautiful, let's turn this into a title. There is two ways to do this. One is clicking these six dots and turn into a heading. Or we can use the shortcut for this, which is command alt one or two or three depending on the type of heading that we are going to be using i'm going to be using heading two and the same for the other ones so now let's create the page for task management slash page and we hit enter let's call it my tasks hub and we are going to be creating a database within this page for this we Right slash table inline. This is the name of the page and this is the name of the database. The reason why I prefer to do it like this, to create a page and then a database instead of it, is because maybe in the future we want to add more databases for different things. For example, I use uh, goals and outcomes and both are different databases in my own system. So I'm gonna be populating all these databases over here. But so far, we will just need one. So here, the properties that we are going to be using is the task, this is gonna be the task description, the due date, which is going to be the date in which we are going to do this task, then add a new property with the project, and this is going to be a select property. We can add here the different projects that we have, project one, the next one is going to be the dollar task. This concept comes from K High, and if you want to dive a little bit deeper into it, I just created a video recently in which I explained it in full detail that I'm going to link over here. But long story short, this is based on a quadrant that tells you how high or low skill and high or low leverage your task is, so then you can prioritize them better. And we have these different options. Next is going to be the task status. That is also going to be a select property. And for this, I like to have three statuses. Not started, in progress, and completed. The reason for this is I like to have this in progress status because whenever I'm going to start to work on a task, I like to move it to in progress because it's a way to tell my brain that I'm now working on this task. And believe it or not, this really helps with focusing on that task. And finally, we are going to add a select property for the estimated time. This is the time that we estimate is going to take us to tackle this task. I like to separate it in, in these different time intervals. And this also helps me a lot when I'm planning my week to know if I have planned too much for one day or too little for that day. So I can be much more realistic with my planning. And that is it. This will be the very simple task management system that we are going to be creating. If we want the page to be shown full width, we just go here and select full width and we can see all the properties at once. So let's add some tasks. Okay, so that is it. But for me, this view is not very useful. So therefore I'm going to be creating a page that is going to be the page where I'm gonna live in every day that is going to tell me what I need to get done today. So for this, let's go back to the HQ page 
and create this new page, which is going to be called today. And now we are going to be creating a linked database. This is a mirror image of this task database that we just created. And we are going to be pulling all the tasks that are due today, slash linked database. And we search for the tasks hub. And here, because is the view that I'm going to be using every day, I like to use the Kanban view. I will explain you why in a moment. For this, we will add a new view and select the board view. And then I'm going to delete the previous table view. This no project we can hide. So now we can see that here, this is being separated by project, but I want to separate it by status because I want to be dragging the tasks from left to right until they are completed. So in order to change that, we go to the three dots and come here to group by and select status. So now we can see all these statuses. And now I want to filter by those tasks that are due today. And that is it. So whenever now I'm going to start doing this task, I'm just going to move it here. And when I do it, this is going to be moved over here. And that is it. And this will be the page where I live every day. By the way, this filter is very simplistic because let's say that today I don't finish all my tasks. So tomorrow, those tasks of yesterday wouldn't be visible, but this will require some more complex filters that we are not going to get into in this video. But, but if you're interested in knowing more about this, I link a video over here in which you can see my whole system. And also I show you how this real filter looks like. But for the time being, to make it simple, let's keep it this way. So now we have just created a very simple task management system that can get you up and running. Now let's go back to our HQ and into our knowledge management column. Here, let's create a new page that is going to call my knowledge hub. And here we are going to be creating three databases, one for books, one for articles, and another one for authors. This one will be optional. I will explain you why. So let's create the first one and let's create the second one. Okay, so we have the bare bones of our system. So let's define which are going to be the properties for our books database. First, the title, then the status. This is gonna be useful for separating which books are we actively reading, which books we have read, and which books are pending. And the next property is going to be the author. Here we have two options. One, to leave it as a text property, so we can write here the name of the author, or we can make a relation between the book's database and the author's database. The pro of doing a relation is that, let's say that one same author has several books and some articles. So we will be able to condense all the information related to that author into this author's database. Let me explain. Here, if we change this to a relation and we select the authors database and then by going here, we will be able to write here the name of the author and create a new page in this other database. So here you can see that the name was added. Now, if we go to the articles and we also create an author property, we can do the same. We can tag it to the author. So now we will be able to tag the author over here and we will be able to see in this database everything that is related to this author. So the way that I use this book's database, I have it linked with my Readwise account. And when I'm reading books on my Kindle device and I highlight them, those highlights will be imported automatically into the database. So if you're interested in knowing how this works, you can find in the description of this video a link so you can start using Readwise if you also use Kindle. But if not, I have here a video with my full system overview on how I take notes from books and process them with online tools. So then for the articles database, we will add also here, which is the status of the article. The statuses can be not read, reading, and read. The same as with the books. And for me, this will be the bare minimum for this system to work. So now the way to input articles into our system will be to either use the official Notion Chrome extension or the other extension that I recommend the most, which is Save to Notion. You can find a link in the description of this video to both of them. And so that will be it for our Knowledge Hub. Now let's go back to the HQ and create what would be 
our final database, which is a scratchpad. The idea of this scratchpad is to have a place where we can fast input whatever thought we are having, so then we can process it into other places of our workspace. So for this, I'm going to create a database that is contained within a page. And for this, we are going to be using this table full page because we are not going to input anything else within that page. So that page is just going to be the database. Here, we are going to be using the scratchpad. And honestly, we just need one property, which is the idea property. So here, we will be able to input whatever ideas we're having, and then we can process them into every part of our system. So now the next step will be to make everything look pretty because this is quite ugly in my opinion. This is one of the features that I love about Notion and is that you can really customize how everything looks. So we can customize these titles. So let's create a background color, which is going to be orange. And then I like to also tint this text with orange. And for this, we do three clicks and change the color of the text to orange. We can even move it to the middle just by adding spaces. And the same for these two. Now let's add a cover image and let's change some of these icons so they can represent what is inside. And now if we really want to take it up a notch, we will also input some images to match these colors. And the way to import them is to drag them on the top of the title. You can see that here we have the blue line on top of task management, but if it's here, it's gonna be on top of everything, but we want to respect the column. And then the last step will be to add a new icon to my HQ. So that is it. This will be for me what is the bare minimum system that I can have to really start functioning in Notion. So tell me in the comments below if there is anything that you didn't understand so I can expand upon in the comments or even record a video for you. And I hope that this was useful for your first days using Notion. So that is it for this video, guys, and hasta la próxima.